this is practice number one, the video for solving quadratics by factoring. We're going to use the zero product law, and I highlighted at the top of the directions here, you need to make sure if you're using the zero product law that the quadratic is set equal to zero. So we're going to do two problems on this practice. First thing you always do when you factor is look for a GCF, our greatest common factor. So when I'm looking here at 12x squared plus 8x, it does look like there is a greatest common factor. Looks like I can divide a 4 out of both. And then both terms also have x's. My GCF always uses the x with the smaller exponent. So I'm going to factor a 4x out of both, which means I have to pull the GCF out in front. When I divide here, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we'll have an x plus 2. Now when I factor this one, um, I can't factor 3x plus 2 anymore, so the zero product law tells me that in order to find the x-intercept for the solution, I take every factor that has an x and set it equal to zero. All right, this one on the left here, all I have to do to get x by itself is divide by 4. So 0 divided by 4 is 0. 0 is one of your x-intercepts and one of your solutions. On the next one, I subtract 2. I'll get 3x equals negative 2. Divide by 3. And our other solution is negative 2 thirds. Good. So the other problem I'm going to do here is number 4. Now, in order to start this problem, you need to make sure that you set this quadratic equal to 0, which means I'm going to move this 10x by subtracting it over. Then I'm going to do this in the same step here. I'm also going to subtract 16 from both sides. Because what's going to happen on the right-hand side is those are going to cancel off to give you the 0 that you're looking for. And on the left-hand side, you'll keep your x squared. 4 minus 10 is negative 6x. And negative 40 minus 16 is negative 55. Now I have a trinomial set equal to 0 that I'm going to factor. To factor this, since there is no GCF, I'm going to use split the middle. There's a 1 in front, so I'm going to multiply the 1 and the negative 55. I need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 55 and add to negative 6. Since I'm multiplying to be a negative, I'm going to need one positive and one negative number. So let's start here. We'll have 1 and negative 55. And then I think just 5 and negative 11. Then I have to switch the sign. So I have negative 1 positive 55 and negative 5 positive 11. The pair that adds to negative 6 is 5 negative 11. So those are the two numbers I'm going to use to split the middle. And when I split the middle, the first and the last term come down. This middle term here gets split up with the numbers I just showed. Now, since I have four terms, I'm going to use the method of grouping to finish factoring. All right, from the first group, I look for a GCF. Both of these have an x in common. So I'm going to pull an x out in front, and inside there I'll have x plus 5. Now, in the third term here, it's negative. So I'm going to have a negative GCF, and it looks like I can pull out a negative 11. When I do that, I'm left with x plus 5. Remember, that's always a good thing because you want both of these parentheses to have the same um, term. So your factor form here is going to take that similar factor, x plus 5, and then the greatest common factors you pulled out. All you have to do to finish this problem is set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So the one on the left here, I subtract 5, and I'm left with x equals negative 5. That's one solution. And here I add 11, which gives me x equals 11 as a solution. So there are two there as well. If you have questions on the other problem on this practice, go ahead and ask your teacher or check the key that's posted on campus.